watching. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and we have switched over from promoting nonprofits during uh, the summer and the rest of the time. We've done over 300 shows. Now we are talking to candidates that are running for mayor, city council at large, city council, and school committee. And today in studio, I have Susan Castro, who's running for Ward 4 City Council. Susan, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for coming in. Nice to see you as well. Um, hitting the ground running. Ward 4, Council Paul Stadensky has decided not to seek re-election. Yes. I believe it's 14 years. Yes, he's retiring. He's retiring. He had a long career in public service, a long career. His father was in the city council and uh, state representative and mayor. Yes. And Paul was police chief and city councilor. Yes, he was. So now it's time for new blood in Ward 4. And you've stepped up to the plate to run. You ran for councilor at large last time. Two years ago. Two years ago. It came mm -hmm. real close. I did. Okay. And now Ward 4 is an opportunity. Why are you running this time around? Well, I'm running because Ward 4 is my first love. I've lived in Ward 4 for 27 years. And I married a lifelong Ward 4 resident, John Tuick. He grew up very close to us on Woodside Avenue. And um, I've, I've always followed what's going on in Ward 4. I, I love Ward 4 and feel that all my skills and talents can make a difference for it. Now, you served on the planning board. For I did. years. For five years. Five years. That's a long time. My dad served on the planning board. He was on for the five years and he voted against a certain hotel project and wasn't reappointed to a seat. And he said it was the best thing that ever happened to him because he didn't want to stay. He had enough. But you liked the planning board and you were very active and very involved. Uh, the most visible issue was the power plant. That's you right. You were an absolute staunch opponent of the power plant. Um, Yes, yes I was, but also on the planning board you don't go into it and take sides. You right. go in and evaluate the applications and Correct. and go from there. I mean, I as an attorney, one of the first things I learned was to remain open to things and to set my personal feelings aside. I asked hard questions on the power plant that I didn't get adequate answers to. Exactly. And That's right. and, and you stood firm and you were part of a, a lawsuit. Okay. I think you were sued personally. Correct? I, I, I don't I know was. if you can, can you, is, I know that it's still out there, but not out there. Can oh, you talk about it at this point? I or can. The, the last lawsuit, election cycle, people couldn't talk about it. The la well, that's because two years ago, the lawsuit was still pending. But mm -hmm. since that time, the lawsuit was dismissed mm -hmm. with prejudice against all of us, which means that it can't come back up. Okay. Right. We're all totally released. And the lawsuit seemed to rise, um, they seemed to gather as defendants people who were critical of the power plant project. Mm -hmm. um, the, the mayor at the time, Linda Belzotti, several city councilors, Jay Stewart, Tom Brophy, um, they just kind of threw them all into a basket, including myself and my wonderful late friend, the chairman of the planning board, your late friend too, yes, yes. Wayne McAllister. And we all got hit with lawsuits. Fortunately, because we were sued in our official capacity, um, the city appointed lawyers for us. and. I know for myself, I had a fine lawyer, mm -hmm. um, but it was a tough three years. It really was. We spent a lot of time wondering sure how this would all go. Taking time away from the other business. That's the, exactly the, the right. Board. Yes, the planning boards are very planning board, zoning board, very intense boards that a lot of stuff comes before. That's right. That's not an easy job. That's right. I think the school committee and the planning board are by far the hardest, well, and of course city council, are by far the hardest things to serve on in the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot of um, pre 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 preparation and follow through to be prepared for those, um, those meetings. So if you get elected, are you ready for all the phone calls? All the, my street's not plowed, it needs to be paved, the, the dog is barking too loud. The ward councilors get those calls. The councilors at large don't necessarily get those calls as much. As a matter of fact, I remember Paul Stadensky Sr. once telling me with a gleam in his eyes that when he got the call, he gave him the award for account. They gave him the award council's number. I've been told that too. Okay, he, used, he, he would say yes. it even if he was sitting right next to us right mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. are you ready for what the job entails? You, you, you have preparation as an attorney. You've served on the planning board. Mm -hmm. I would think those are good qualifications to get elected. I think they are. I think they're also good qualifications to be a good city councilor. Mm -hmm. And I am ready. And I've been doing a lot of door knocking all over Ward 4. We have four precincts, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of interesting issues that arise, including 
dogs barking and uh, people running their ATVs up and down the street like there's no tomorrow and the condition of their roads. Um, it's been very interesting finding out that a lot of people have the same issues that I have. Mm -hmm. Now, what issues have they brought to the table that you want to bring to the table that maybe aren't being addressed now? Um, City Council uh, works with the school committee because the, there's a Ward 4 school committee person, mm -hmm. uh, Brick Gormley, who Brick is Gormley. not being challenged. That's right. And then you have counselors at large. You would have four other colleagues that I always looked at it like I have four city council, five, I'm sorry, five city councils, That's four right. at large and one in my ward. And That's then right. you have a mayor. So how does that all work together? What would you bring to the table to create consensus, to work together for the betterment of the city? Diplomacy is key at every level of government. You know that, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, I'm experienced in diplomacy. I know how to bring consensus. Um, it, it's very important that the council and the mayor work together. I know that doesn't always happen, but at the same time, they have to see each other's points of view. I think the council is very um, integral to how our community operates and how well our community functions. Um, asking hard questions of the executive branch of our government, if you will. We're supposed to be a weak mayor, strong council form of government. Um, and, and I think there's value in that, and I would pursue that as a city councilor. Okay, now different issues are coming up right now. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion for a while. The desal plant goes back to mayor units. Yes. Okay, we lease it. We spend six million dollars a year. Yes. We don't use a lot of water from it. We don't. There's a proposal by the current mayor to buy it. Yes. And there are a couple of councillors that are saying, wait a minute, let's not necessarily buy it, but let's look at another alternative, which is the MWRA. What do you feel or what have you heard from the voters out there in Ward 4 about this issue? I'm doing a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. um, I attended the meeting at which the MWRA representative spoke. Um, the in they provided very interesting information. I'm not afraid of the numbers like some people are because I feel like we're paying millions of dollars every year for uh, the right to draw water at a charge from this plant. So the numbers aren't that different if we, if we uh, follow out the contract to its conclusion versus going with the MWRA, at, at the end at least. Um, the MWRA makes sense in some regards because the Aquaria plant is old. Mm -hmm. And I'm told by people that have seen it, although I have not visited it myself, is that it's dated. At the time it was state-of-the-art technology, I'm not sure that it is today. So what are we paying for? And who would be running it under, if we bought it? it would it be a, a, a local version of the MWR, like a water resources authority? Uh, is, the, is the devil in the details? Are there plans like that? Do it, you know? I, I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure, but it's an issue that I'm ready to sink my teeth into. Um, in my law practice, I do a lot of contracts. I don't believe any contract is truly ironclad, as I've heard the MWR, or the, I'm sorry, the Aquaria mm -hmm. contract described. So there's a lot there. Um, we're, we're throwing money out the window mm -hmm. every year that we don't need this, this water. And the other thing is, too, I understand we're dumping some of this water every day. We, draw, we have to draw water from to keep those lines clear. Sure. That's really controversial that we're dumping water and perhaps even violating D DEP regulations mm -hmm. doing so. Interesting. Development. You're in Ward 4, right next door in Ward 3. Meadowwoods, if I'm correct. Yes, it uh, is. West Bridgewater development. Most of the homes, almost a vast majority of the homes would be West Bridgewater residents. All of the homes would be in West okay. Bridgewater. Okay, oh, I thought there were like two or three that no. were brought in. You All see a road them. coming out That's to right. West Chestnut Street. That's right. Um, on road the to other nowhere. end, it is near where you live on, on the West Bridgewater line. You know, the, the, I, I guess you would be affected as well if they built that development, correct? Potentially, potentially. Okay. They're in the subdivision plans that are proposed in West Bridgewater that were filed with Brockton, there is an opening to connect to perhaps an adjacent subdivision on land 
that would probably end up on my street in mm. Ward 4. It's, it's quite a distance away, but potentially that is what could happen. Um, I don't think that they could connect a subdivision to that land. It, it's in West Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. Part of my street is in West Bridgewater. In West Bridgewater, our street is private, which means that all of the, the abutting owners own to the middle of the street. I don't think you could connect a subdivision to that street, but remains to be seen if someone were to try. But it looks a little, I, I guess I would use the word presumptuous to me, that the road is already being built before the development goes in. And that's the type of stuff that you probably sat with on the planning board looking at when you were serving on the planning board. Yes, clearing that land was definitely cheeky and making it look like it's a done deal. But I, I've been following what's been happening. The neighbors over there are very aware and active. They are planning to uh, descend in mass onto the planning board meeting this coming Tuesday. Um, to, because it keeps coming up in front of the planning board and keeps getting conveniently continued. Yeah. I don't think the neighbors are going to let anyone get away with it, and I know the Ward 4 counselor is also against it as well. So it should be interesting to see what happens. Okay, they um, give me the three. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, in the five years that I was on the planning board, I was always told that the city of Brockton would not support a subdivision that was accessed through Brockton but actually we're located in, on an, in a different community. We had one come in front of us that was actually in Stoughton, but they, they were trying to access it through Sumner Street West, mm -hmm. and we were just told this cannot happen, Brockton won't do it. All of the heads of the departments were against it. And then there was another one that was going to be accessed off to East Street, but actually located in East Bridgewater. So I don't understand what's different about this one. That, someone would entertain Got to pay idea. attention to the legal notices, right? Well, yes, you do. And the hearings. Okay. Yes, that's the sexy stuff. Exactly. So I got the three-minute queue. I want to give two minutes to you to tell people how to contact you, your phone number, your website, your Facebook, all of that. And forget I'm here. Talk to the voters and tell them why they should vote Susan and Castro. Okay. Well, I've lived in Ward 4 for 27 years, and my husband's lived there for his whole life. We've raised our two sons in Ward 4, and we love Ward 4. Um, I think I would make a very good Ward 4 City Councilor. I have the experience from being on the Planning Board and two years on the Zoning Board of Appeals. I have the background and the skills and the education. Um, I've been a lawyer for over 30 years. Um, I've been following Brockton politics and also what happens in Ward 4 for a long time. Ward 4 is distinguished by several important issues. Um, we have We've been a dumping ground for the city, as Mark related to. Um, we have um, a, a landfill. We have It's capped, but we still have a landfill, and we have problems that arise from it, according to the neighborhoods I visited. We have a wastewater treatment plant that incinerates solid waste. We have still the potential of a power plant being built. Um, we have a, and we also have a crematorium that lies in the background that may be built off Thatcher Street near St. Joseph's Manor. For all these reasons, we need representation that's going to pay attention to all this and have the background and the skills to address it properly. And, and that's what I have. Um, I, I love Ward 4. I have a lot of friends in Ward 4. I hear about things. Um, I'd be grateful. For, I'd be honored by uh, votes from Ward 4. Um, my website is www.susannicastro.com. My phone number is 508-941-0108. Call me with issues or concerns because I do return phone calls promptly. Thanks, Susan. Glad Thank you came you. on. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates for mayor, city council, council at large, and school committee. But most of all, do your civic duty in September and go out there and vote on the 19th. Thanks for joining us.